Albert Bell, aka Mr. Freeze, may have preferred a cold clubhouse temperature, but he was a hothead on the baseball diamond. For Bell, playing angry worked, as he averaged 40 home runs per season during an 8 year span. However, his temper and inability to control his emotions led to drama on and off the field, including run-ins with fans, contentious interviews, and aggressive contact with other players. Albert's bad reputation was magnified by a corked bat fiasco. His complicated relationship with the media cost him an MVP award. During his prime, Albert seemed destined for Cooperstown before a hip condition derailed his career. Thank you to everyone for the suggestions and make sure to leave a comment on who you want to see next. As always, if you enjoy, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at camp23 underscore YT and hit the bell to enable all notifications so you don't miss any future Camp 23 videos. Albert Juwan Bell was born on August 25th, 1966 in Shreveport, Louisiana to parents Albert Sr. and Carrie. Known as Joey at the time, he had a fraternal twin brother named Terry. Their parents, who worked as school teachers, encouraged their boys to be driven in both academics and athletics. Albert had an all-state baseball career while attending Huntington High School. In 1984, he was a silver medalist in the Junior Olympics as part of Team USA. On the football field, he was the starting quarterback, free safety, and kicker. Bell also excelled in the classroom, where he ranked 6th out of a 266 student graduating class. After high school, Albert turned down a Notre Dame football scholarship to major in accounting and play baseball for Louisiana State University, where he was teammates with his brother Terry. Off the field, Albert volunteered his time at local high schools and visited sick children in the hospital. During his junior year, Albert was expected to be a top pick in the impending MLB draft. The added pressure morphed into an anger that consumed him. During the 1987 Southeast Conference Tournament, Albert tried to go after a fan who shouted racial slurs at him. Two of Bell's teammates tackled him, and he was suspended for the College World Series. In 57 games, he batted 349, hit 21 homers, drove in 66, and stole 19 bases. Many MLB teams were wary of drafting Bell due to his volatile personality. He fell to the second round when the Cleveland Indians selected him with the 47th overall pick. Between 1987 and 1988, Albert progressed through the lower levels of the minor leagues. In 1989, he mashed 20 homers in AA, receiving a midseason call-up to the big league squad. On July 15th, Bell made his MLB debut as the starting right fielder, batting 6th in the lineup. In his first at bat, Albert hit an RBI single against all-time great Nolan Ryan. Bell promptly stole second base and finished the day 1 for 4. In 62 games as a rookie, he hit 225 with 7 homers and 37 RBIs. Bell's 1990 season was interrupted by a 10-week stay at an alcohol rehab clinic. Once he got clean and left the facility, Bell officially ditched the name Joey in favor of Albert, signifying a fresh start. He would later help others by contributing to drug abuse awareness seminars within Cleveland. In May of 1991, Albert was suspended for a week after throwing a ball that drilled a heckling fan in the stands. In June, he was demoted to AAA after not hustling on a ground ball double play he hit into. In 123 games, Bell broke out offensively. He batted 282, hit 28 homers, drove in 95, and was 34% better than league average according to OPS+. In 1992, Bell cemented himself as a regular in the batting order, splitting time between left field and designated hitter. In 153 games, he hit 34 homers, drove in 112 runs, and earned MVP votes. Across MLB, he was tied for 5th in homers and tied for 4th in RBIs. In 1993, Albert was a fearsome threat in the batter's box and gained notoriety for his expertise in charging the mound, which led to suspensions in both 92 and 93. In the first half, he slugged 23 homers and drove in 72 runs, resulting in his first All-Star appearance. During the Midsummer Classic, he hit an RBI single and scored two runs, contributing to the American League's 9-3 victory. On October 2nd, he hit the final home run at Municipal Stadium before the Indians moved to their new home park, Jacobs Field. Bell finished the year with a 290 average, 38 homers, 129 RBIs, 23 stolen bases, 14 sacrifice flies, and a 145 OPS+. He led the league in RBIs and sacrifice flies. 
On defense, he was first among American League left fielders with 16 assists. He placed 7th in AL MVP voting and took home his first Silver Slugger. Albert Bell's nickname, Mr. Freeze, has an entertaining backstory. Kenny Lofton, a longtime teammate of his, recalled during an interview from 2015 that Bell was very adamant about the clubhouse temperature being set to 40 degrees. One day, Lofton and Bell got into an unspoken battle over it. Each time Kenny turned the temperature up, Albert would undo it. Eventually, Bell turned it down to 35 degrees, grabbed his bat, and broke the thermostat. For two days, the entire clubhouse was wearing jackets indoors. In 1994, hitting the cover off the ball was Bell's daily routine. In June, he batted 365 with 10 homers and 29 RBIs, receiving Player of the Month honors for the first time of his career. On July 15th, during an Indians-White Sox game, Chicago's manager, Gene Lamont, asked the umpires to check Albert's bat for cork. A substance that makes the bat noticeably lighter allows for hitters to increase bat speed and hit the ball farther due to the trampoline effect. The bat was confiscated and locked in the umpire's room. During the game, knowing the bat was corked, Cleveland sent pitcher Jason Grimsley on a Mission Impossible assignment. Coming in through the ceiling, Grimsley swapped Bell's corked bat with teammate Paul Sorrento's bat. Exchanging it with one of Albert's bats was out of the question due to all of them being corked as well. The plan failed as Grimsley left an obvious mess behind and used a bat with Sorrento's name engraved on it. The end result? Albert was suspended for seven games. In just 106 games due to the player strike, Bell batted an absurd 357, just two points shy of Paul O'Neill for the American League batting title. Albert collected 36 homers, 101 RBIs, 147 hits, a league-leading 294 total bases, a 1.152 OPS, and a 194 OPS+. In all of MLB, Bell was 6th in homers, tied for 4th in hits and RBIs, and 3rd in both OPS and OPS+. Plus. In 94, Albert made his second All-Star team, won another Silver Slugger, and placed 3rd in MVP voting, only behind Ken Griffey Jr. and Frank Thomas. In 1995, Bell took his game to the next level. The player's strike was resolved in early April, and Cleveland played their season opener on April 27th. Albert hit the ground running, picking up five consecutive two-hit games during week one. He went on to make his third All-Star team and participated in the Home Run Derby, finishing runner-up to Frank Thomas. Bell turned it up a notch in the second half. On July 18th, facing future Hall of Fame closer Lee Smith, Albert hit a bomb to dead center field for a walk-off grand slam. In August, Bell batted 381 with a 1.303 OPS. He also mashed 14 homers, two of which were walk-offs on back-to-back -back nights against the Blue Jays. He followed this up with 17 dingers in September, tying an MLB record set by Babe Ruth in 1927 that has not been repeated since. Bell won back-to-back -back Player of the Month awards for August and September. On the year, Albert betted 317 with 50 home runs, 52 doubles, 173 hits, 121 runs scored, and a 177 OPS+. He led the league in runs, doubles, home runs, RBIs, slugging percentage, and total bases. Bell became the first and only member of the 50 home runs and 50 doubles club, doing so in a 144 game season. Over a full 162, he was on pace for around 56 homers and 58 doubles. The Indians won an MLB best 100 games in 1995, claiming the AL Central Division title and matching up with the Red Sox in the ALDS. In Game 1, Bell drove in two runs with a double to even the score in the 6th inning, and belted a clutch home run to tie the score again in the 11th. After Boston manager Kevin Kennedy asked the umpires to check Albert's bat, Bell flexed his bicep to display the true reason the ball left the yard. Cleveland won this game in 13 innings, steamrolled their way to a three-game sweep, and advanced to play the Mariners in the ALCS. In the seventh inning of Game 1, Bell crushed a game-tying dinger, but Seattle would come out on top. The Indians won four of the next five games, punching their ticket to the Fall Classic and ending their 41-year World Series drought. They were opposed by the Braves and their Big Three, which featured Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin, and John Smoltz. 
In preparation, Bell studied Maddox's tendencies by watching hours of highlights on tape. Atlanta narrowly edged Cleveland in back-to-back one-run games, jumping out to a 2-0 series lead. Before Game 3, the media was swarming the Indians' dugout, prompting Bell to go on a tirade during batting practice, which led to most of them leaving. Commissioner Bud Selig later punished him in February of the following year, and Albert paid a $50,000 fine. Cleveland won Game 3 in extras, and in Game 4, Bell hit another game-tying home run in the sixth inning. Even so, the Braves took a 3-1 series lead. In Game 5, Albert ignited the scoring with a two-run blast against Greg Maddox to give the Indians an early lead. They held on to win this game, but the bats fell silent in Game 6 due to a standout effort from Tom Glavin. In disappointing fashion, Cleveland fell in six games. Just days later on Halloween night, Bell hopped in his truck and chased down kids from his neighborhood who had egged his house. Let me begin with an obvious question. Who threw the egg? He was convicted of reckless operation of a motor vehicle and fined $1,000. Being cast in a negative light made all the difference in AL MVP voting as the baseball writers were not keen on the idea of doing Bell any favors. Despite having superior numbers, he finished second behind Mo Vaughn. Albert garnered one fewer first place vote and lost by eight points. Nonetheless, he was named the Sporting News Major League Player of the Year and received his third consecutive Silver Slugger. In the first half of 1996, Bell slugged 27 homers and drove in 74 runs en route to a fourth consecutive All-Star selection. These stats played second fiddle to his shenanigans. On May 31st, Albert warned Brewer second baseman Fernando Vina not to come in the baseline after Vina blocked his path earlier in the game. When it happened again, Bell knocked him down, and a brawl later ensued between Cleveland and Milwaukee in the ninth inning. Albert was suspended five games for the incident, serving only three after winning an appeal. From July 28, 1995 to July 26, 1996, Bell hit 67 home runs, the most in a 162-game span in Cleveland history. Albert drove in 164 runs with a 1.172 OPS in that stretch. Bell finished the year with a 311 average, 48 home runs, 148 RBIs, 187 hits, 11 stolen bases, and a 158 OPS+. He walked more than he struck out and placed third in MVP voting, only behind Alex Rodriguez and Juan Gonzalez. Bell led the league in RBIs again, marking his third time in four years. He considered a run batted in to be the most important offensive stat, saying, Hitting for a high average is nice, so is hitting a ton of home runs, but driving in a run a game is awesome. The Indians won 99 games and secured another AL Central division crown. Unfortunately, the Baltimore Orioles sent them home in the first round, winning in four games. Albert's go-ahead grand slam in Game 3 greatly contributed to the Tribe's only victory. When the season concluded, Bell left in free agency, signing a five-year, $55 million deal with the rival White Sox, briefly becoming baseball's highest paid player. In 1997, Albert was selected to his fifth consecutive All-Star team. He batted 274 and racked up 45 doubles, 30 dingers, and 116 RBIs. 1998 was a sensational year on offense for Bell. After he was left off the All-Star team, Albert swatted nine homers in the White Sox's first eight games of the second half. On July 17th, he crushed his 300th career home run. In July of 1998, Bell hit 16 homers, an MLB record matched by Mark McGuire in 1999. He was named Player of the Month for both July and September. Albert's monster second half included a 387 average, 31 home runs, 86 RBIs, and a 1.267 OPS. To put that into perspective, Sammy Sosa hit 33 homers in the second half of that same year during his chase with Mark McGuire to break the single season home run record. For the year, Bell batted 328, hit 49 home runs, drove in 152, collected 200 hits, and posted a 172 OPS+. He set White Sox single season records for home runs, RBIs, total bases, and doubles, all of which stand today. 
Albert nearly replicated his 50 homers and 50 doubles campaign. He led the league in slugging percentage, OPS, OPS+, total bases, and sacrifice flies. Bell also played in a league-leading 163 games due to a wonky suspended game that was made up, with both contests counted separately. Albert placed 8th in MVP voting, and was recognized with his 5th Silver Slugger. In the 7 year span from 1992 to 1998, he batted an insane 303, averaging 41 homers, 126 RBIs, 40 doubles, and a 153 OPS+. A clause written into Bell's contract stated that he must remain among baseball's top 3 highest paid players. He opted out and joined the Baltimore Orioles on another 5 year deal, this one worth $65 million. The White Sox missed out on the playoffs in both years with Albert on the team. In 1999, Bell was not selected to the All-Star team and went on a second half tear, much like he did the year prior. On July 25th, facing the Angels, Albert was 4 for 4 with 3 home runs on the day when he stepped to the plate in the 11th inning of a tied game. When he got hit by a pitch, it robbed him of a chance for a fourth homer, so he refused to take his base. Bell disputed the call until he reluctantly trudged to first. In September, he batted 381, hit 8 homers, and drove in 30 runs, capturing Player of the Month honors for the sixth time of his career. As a right fielder, he tied for the American League lead with 17 assists. Albert finished with a 297 average, 37 home runs, 117 RBIs, 17 stolen bases, 19 more walks than strikeouts, and a 143 OPS+. He became the fourth player to have eight straight seasons of 30 home runs and 100 RBIs, joining Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Jimmy Fox. Since then, Albert Pujols, Rafael Palmeiro, Manny Ramirez, and Alex Rodriguez are the only players to achieve this. In June of 2000, Bell hit 365 with 12 big flies and 37 RBIs, receiving Player of the Month honors. Albert played most of the season in pain and sat out a large chunk of September. He was diagnosed with an inflamed bursa sac in his right hip, a condition that limited Bell to a designated hitter role the rest of the year. In 141 games, he hit 23 homers with 103 RBIs. On October 1st, unknown to anyone at the time, Albert homered in the final at bat of his career. In March of 2001, osteoarthritis in his hips forced him to retire at just 34 years old. For his career, Bell amassed a 40.1 war, batted 295, tallied 1,726 hits, mashed 381 homers, drove in 1,239 runs, and posted a 144 OPS+. In just 12 MLB seasons, with 10 of those as an everyday player, he was a 5-time All-Star and a 5-time Silver Slugger winner. In the 10-year span from 1991 to 2000, Albert batted 298, averaging 37 homers, 120 RBIs, and 38 doubles per season. In that same time frame, he put up comparable power numbers to some of the premier sluggers of the 1990s, including Barry Bonds, Frank Thomas, and Ken Griffey Jr. Bell hit more home runs than Thomas and averaged more RBIs and doubles than any of them. In 2003, Albert received his undergraduate accounting degree from LSU. In 2007, a perceived lack of career milestones and poor public relations led to Bell's name dropping off the Baseball Hall of Fame ballot after his second year of eligibility. In 2016, Bell was elected to the Cleveland Indians Hall of Fame. Since retiring, Bell has privately maintained his support for various causes over the years, including donations to scholarship funds, youth baseball clinics, and healthcare initiatives. He currently lives near Phoenix with his three daughters. Had Albert Bell not retired early, he was on a path to Cooperstown, but his complicated legacy would still have presented a challenging obstacle. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts in the video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.